Now we will move to the second session, uh, which is colon cancer screening in Saudi Arabia and update on the guidelines. Discussion will be later on. Discussion later on. The break, discussion break will be later at the end of the session. Uh, this topic is colon cancer screening in Saudi Arabia, update on the guidelines. This is will be given by Dr. Will be given by Dr. Faisal uh, Batwa. Uh, Dr. Faisal is a consultant gastroenterology and assistant uh, professor of medicine at King Saud bin Abdulaziz University Health for Science and he's uh, the vice president for Saudi uh, GI Association and he's the chairman of scientific committee of GI uh, fellowship. Before uh, Dr. Faisal start, we want just to make a little change. Uh, uh, we want to announce that all the coming sessions for this morning will be, uh, the talks will be 18 minutes instead of 20 minutes. And we want to compensate for the delay in the, the start of the session. Welcome, Dr. Faisal. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. First, I would like to thank the team in Riyadh in the SGA for this successful meeting. Their partnership with the Cecil is fruiting up. So you have to uh, catch up that uh, fruit. Uh, my talk today about the recently published clinical practice guidelines uh, in Saudi Arabia. Uh, so this is a context-specific guidelines to us. Uh, my outline uh, will go through, do we need these guidelines? How was it done? Who did it? And who would be the target for these guidelines? And ifs and buts? And what is next after we did these guidelines? So do we need guidelines? Who in the panel think, uh, on the audience here, think that we need colorectal cancer guidelines in Saudi Arabia? Please raise your hands. Okay. Very good. So <laughs> my first part of the presentation was to buy you in. I don't think I need you to buy you in. You believe in, it, in the cause. So uh, bear with me a few minutes there in the beginning. How big is the problem? We're not that dark blue across the wall. Uh, we have a pointer. Hmm. Yeah, we're not that dark blue like the West or the white people. We're not that even light blue like Africa. We're somewhere in the middle. For us, this is number one cancer among males from our registry, and number three among females. A second to thyroid and breast. Breast is three times common in our female population more than colon cancer. But yet, it's a problem. There's mortality issues with this uh, disease. It's the second leading cause of death among cancer-related mortality. Accounts about 10% of the mortalities. And we know that five-year survival is stage-dependent. So if you pick up the disease early, you can have a better cure and a better survival. And this is what happened in the States over the decades with the introduction of new technologies, screening, improvement in treatment modality, survival has been better. And there is a decline in mortality over time. Did we improve? This is our records. We still have 44% uh, mortality. So we're not that great. We didn't do a good job. This is an interval comparative in our cancer registry, they looked into in two periods, over five year period, and they didn't see any improvement. So I hope that convinces so many of the skepticals that we still have a big problem. Can we save the cause? We know that colon cancer probably can save life, and early detection means a better prognosis. And we probably now talk about that colon cancer is a preventable disease. Uh, it's probably cost effective, safe, practical, applicable, and tools are readily available. So why we don't use it? The question that always comes up, when do you start colon cancer screening? And I'll show you what happens in the West. 50 and the curve takes off. You know that for higher risk individuals, the curves tend to shift to the left, and you tend to have a younger age group with the colorectal cancer. What happens to us? We tend to see that the curve goes more to the left and tends to attack an earlier age. So I can think this is enough argument for you 
to buy into the problem. So who wants guidelines? The audience here believe that uh, we need guidelines. In fact, it's a good initiative that the Ministry of Health has created what we call the Center of Evidence of Health uh, Evidence Disease. And this center had an initiative to go over healthcare problems, prioritize them across Saudi Arabia, and develop practice guidelines. We don't have the tools of doing this. So they did a great move of collaboration with McMaster uh, University, and they utilized their great system, a new system of a methodology of development of guidelines that has been adopted internationally with different countries across the world, UK, Japan, you name it. So several countries. So Saudi was of the, one of the leading into this uh, thing. So colon cancer was one of the priority health problems in wave two. So they developed 12 guidelines in wave one, and wave two, another 12 guidelines and 12 health care problems. What they want from these guidelines is clearly stated in their booklet. Our goals is to unify approach to clinical problems and how we tackle them in Saudi Arabia in an evidence-based way. And you know that our community of practitioners is multinational with different backgrounds, so we have completely probably different views about things and the way we approach them. So putting this as a guide for practitioners would be of great help. The evidence contacted Saudi expert panels from different specialties, and I would have to salute Dr. Asani uh, from the colorectal surgery department in King Faisal Specialist Hospital because he was leading the team of development. There was three colorectal surgeons representing the colorectal society uh, uh, of uh, colorectal surgery in Saudi Arabia. There was a stoma nurse who sees cancers after they're done and live with the misery of it, uh, representing the chapter of stoma nurses. Uh, there were three gastroenterologists, uh, two of us continued, uh, representing SGA, and one dropped out from the uh, uh, guidelines. Uh, two in family medicine physicians, one from the private sector, one from the Ministry of Health, uh, one oncologist, and one radiation oncologist. And one representative of the public uh, health department of Ministry of Health. And on top of that, there was a PhD in law patient who volunteered to be part of this committee, uh, and he was uh, very contributive to the decision making. So I think this is probably the first time that we have patient advocate talking to us in our decision making. So this is the best panel that you can get out of this. Majority of the panel is coming from King Faisal Specialist Hospital. In collaboration with McMaster Group, and I pointed out the names here in the McMaster Group to let you know that there is like a Saudi fellow is part of that. Walid Al Hazani is uh, doing his fellowship in McMaster in gastroenterology, and he was part of the great uh, development team. So this is what their uh, usual framework of action. They take your conflict of interest out. They organize the budget and the timeline and they document the process throughout. This is the outline of the frame. And they take the opinions of this, all stakeholders in the process, they create the questions, and you do the priority setting of health problems in collaboration with the needy, identify the target audience and the topics that we, they want to, and a process of development of questions goes on. In that process, after you develop the questions, you try to summarize the evidence of what's related to this issue, and you put a judging quality methodology. So you allow the participants to make judgments about events or questions and to create answers to them based on the available evidence. And you take in consideration the effects, the risks, and the importance of outcomes. After you do that stage, it's a stepwise approach. You develop recommendations, you write the reports, you show it to the panel, and it goes after all of this process to peer review process. So peer review, it becomes as a peer reviewed guidelines 
to ascertain the quality and assure uh, evidence is properly uh, conducted. Then the second phase of dissemination and implementation evaluation is that goes to the one who wants the guidelines and what he wants to do with it. And then updating. So this is our project timeline. It was supposed to start in June in 2013 and finish up in January 2014. With the wave of changes in the ministers of health, this project has been on and off for a year and a half. Finally, we were able to conduct the project until March 2015. Alhamdulillah, it was published later on in the end, a couple of months ago. So how do we take, or how does grade works for uh, uh, grading the evidence? It talk about the quality of the evidence, so if there is high quality evidence, or moderate quality, or low quality, or very low quality. And it about, it takes the judgment or the confidence of the panel who's discussing the effects, um, how close this to real life situations. Uh, so high quality will go for like very confident and very low quality, there is very little confidence that this will reflect the true likeness. How we did it? So we wanted to look into the things from inside. What is relevant to us? We needed to look into the questions that are really relevant to this community because you, have, you know there is published guidelines across the world, east and west. So what is relevant to us, that's what matters to. The need of screening in Saudi Arabia, do we need to? Which age that we should consider? Start or finish? And which modality that we should use? So what we did was a comparative between modalities and which one of them would be the most useful one. So seven key questions were developed. The first question was, should we do screening to average risk people? Very simple question or we don't do screening. So we have to compare screening versus no screening. The second question then, at age of 70, do we need to do screening or we should leave them alone? Then the third question comes, should colonoscopy used for screening versus no screening or flexible sigmoidoscopy for screening versus no screening? So you can appreciate that with our questions always versus doing nothing. And then, Comparing technologies, so CT colonography versus colonoscopy, or flexible sigmoidoscopy versus fecal occult blood testing, and flexible sigmoidoscopy versus colonoscopy. I can assure you that we, you can point there is something missing there. So data was presented in an evidence to table decision, evidence to decision tables, so that's a summary how things happen, literature review, thorough databases review, Ovid, Embase, uh, all, all of the databases were available access in English la language. And with rigorous met methodology, evidence quality was looked into how bad, how low, how high is the evidence or the grade of the evidence that was used. Pr audience and panel were uh, shown this table and evidence were compiled into, and decisions and judgments were made immediately in the same sheet, so you can appreciate where you stand, and with collective agreement. So if there was a disagreement by one member, it was highlighted down in the table that this, this member does dis disagree with the, uh, this recommendation and so on. So points were considered, and e each question was, what's the values and preferences of the community? What implementation considerations that we should look into and how to monitor them. What are the benefits? What are the hearts of the options? How acceptable? What is the feasibility and resource utilization issues? And the balance between desirable and undesirable consequences were taken care of too. And when the panel reached a recommendation, they put it in a five point liquor scale, how the desirable would be, or the undesirable effect, whether it has any risk or outweighs the benefit or goes with the benefit. So each recommendation, each statement goes into this thorough, thorough uh, 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 methodology. And I have to highlight to you what does this recommendations means and what the grade system 
as uniformly did, they wanted that these recommendations to be applicable to different stakeholders. For example, for patients, that a strong recommendation or a conditional, between brackets what we call weak recommendation, uh, would say to the patient, how do you utilize these guidelines? Because these guidelines are intended for everybody, for patients, for physicians, for decision makers. So for, for patients, you can say that from strong recommendation that the panel believes that there is a strong uh, association or a strong uh, benefit from this uh, intervention. While a weak recommendation that majority of individuals in this situation would want to be suggested course of action. So you can suggest to them, uh, but you may have the option not to go for it because we're still, we're not really sure. For clinicians, you can tell your patients this is a strong recommendation because most individuals should receive such therapy or an intervention. But for a weak recommendation, you have to understand there is different things there. And we know, as you know, there is so many different options for colorectal cancer screening, and you're probably not sure which one of them would be more superior to the others, and it's really clearly depends on the situation you are dealing with from resource utilization, individual preferences, and so on. What's more important, for my view, is this is an aid for decision maker. That, you know what, strong recommendation, then you can adopt such a thing. And if it's a weak recommendation, you have to look into this more thoroughly. You need to involve more people and discuss it more and more and more because we are not really sure about whether there is a benefit or a harm. So this is a summary of the whole questions and what we came to. So age of 45 or 45 to 50, there was big debate about that because we know that the curve takes, earlier in, takes off earlier in our population. We know that black Africans, black Americans have a higher or earlier age of onset of disease. Uh, several small studies from the region has showed that uh, we, the disease takes off early. So it was a strong recommendation with low evidence. What about no screening for age of 70? It was a conditional or a weak recommendation that we should be screened, and we leave that to the options for different stakeholders. Let's say a 70-year-old man comes to you and asks you that, should I do a screening for me now at this age? Of course, the evidence about this issue is already low, and there is not much of things to be done. Screening colonoscopy uh, is recommended versus no screening. We think that was a strong recommendation where there's low evidence. And flexible sigmoidoscopy was believed that there's a strong recommendation where there is a moderate uh, evidence. And screening colonoscopy was recommended uh, over colonogra uh, colonography or CT colonography was a low uh, quality of evidence and a conditional thing. Flexible sigmoidoscopy versus FOBT was conditional and a very low evidence about that. And screening colonoscopy is recommended over flexible sigmoidoscopy was a conditional law. I would recommend you go over the document clearly to understand what is mentioned and there. Ifs and buts. We are not near to perfect. We didn't discuss fit. The way we formulate the questions are formulated because it becomes overwhelming and we thought the process will never end. So things were missed, whether intentionally or unintentionally, just to simplify these guidelines. This is the first version that needs an update later on. We didn't discuss DNA and after that discussion and formulation of the questions, remember that was 2013. There, are much, there is much more data is coming on the way for DNA, so that wasn't incorporated in these guidelines. Our local data is very scarce, and the quality that need to be improved. We need more information from our part of the world. And there is no action, no point of these guidelines. If it doesn't take any, it doesn't reflect the, uh, doesn't even cost the ink printed on the paper if, if there is nothing. So what is next? I'll have one last minute. So uh, we need more valid local data. We need to disseminate this information. If you believe in the cause, please serve it. Impact. 
adopt and implement. If you don't have an impact, it means nothing. We need to get the stakeholder acceptance and mainly the population. Your population doesn't understand how important is colon cancer screening. Please, new next generation of guidelines should revise and update it to be more solid and consolidated. Thank you very much. Thank you, Faisal.